Hi, my name is Ed Garza, Mr. Pitchman, and I'm here interviewing a wonderful young lady that uh, I think everyone needs to meet. She is a, an actor as well as a life coach, a lot of experience, and what a great story she has you're going to learn from her, and that is none other than Yi Ching Chow. So nice to meet you. And nice to meet you too. Likewise. So tell us how it all started. I know you have a, quite a story when you came uh, to America that's inspiring to a lot of different people in our audience. If you would tell us where it all began and how you got started. Yeah, absolutely. So it all started when I was a medical student back in China. And I was doing a depression study on rats. I was supposed to make them depressed and then treat their depression. Um, but because I had to torture them to make them depressed, that was not successful. They were very resilient. I got depressed myself from doing that. So I just thought I'd rather help people with their mind and souls than with their physical bodies. Because if I were to be a doctor and I was not happy, then what's the point? If I was suffering, what's the point? Um, so I think it was that question of what's the point that led me to get on a journey of soul searching. And I came to the States with two suitcases adding up to my body weight um, and $3,000 cash. Um, that was how I got started. Um, I was in a, uh, in a master's program for public health, but I started acting when I was in that program. I did my first theater gig when I was there. That's how everything started. I just realized this is really, I felt a very strong pull towards art, towards humanity. So I was I've been a working actor for a while after I got my master's all the way until the pandemic and the pandemic put a hold on the entertainment industry and I started to realize that I was chasing and chasing and chasing but I was never arriving and I knew there were so many people who were just like me so I took that pause to get my coaching certificate I hired a coach I started all this process, worked things through, and I am now helping more people to get to know what exactly they want in their lives and to get unstuck, to, to realize their potential, and just to be more fulfilled. Well, isn't that a great story? Phenomenal. You know, it's a, interesting to talk to many coaches, including myself, you know, we all hire coaches because we all have room to improve, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I like to use a lot, utilize the principle of the um, Kaizen principle. I'm sure you've heard of it before. Yeah. Um, it is a practice of always asking yourself that one question, you know, what can you do to make things better? Yeah. And I like to, you know, talk about that a little bit because everybody has goals in their life. And some of the goals are shallow goals, maybe like New Year's resolutions, and uh, they usually fall short um, because uh, there's a, something that takes over, and that's what's called their subconscious. Mm -hmm. And um, that rules a lot of people's lives. Can we talk a little bit about that? I know in your life coaching, you probably deal with that quite a bit. Um, yes. And people's perceptions, it's like they have a film over their eye based on their past experiences. Yes. What I see a lot, because I help, my niche is I help artists become their own bosses and I help business people become artists. So I am helping with two groups of achievers. And that's the thing with achiever. A lot of the achievers, they try to seek external validation. They achieve because they need that validation. Mm -hmm. it's for their self-esteem correct i see that in a lot of overachiever because i was one of them i've been that's how i came to the states because i got a scholarship it was like i was one in i don't know a thousand people or even more to get the scholarship so i was like achieving a chasing you know it it was always to get the thing but what did i do it for i did it for my self-esteem but I had very low self-esteem. 
So I needed those external validation to make myself feel better. That is a very common trait I see among the people, groups of people that I help. And that's why they feel they were in pain or they never felt enough. Like there was never this thing as enough. And that's why people get stressed out. People have anxiety issues. It was more or less coming from that, that place where, oh, I'm not enough. Oh, this thing is not working out, so I'm not enough. So external things that are happening or, or, or not happening, sometimes people attribute that to themselves. Oh, it's yeah. because of me that it's not happening. And, you know, that's how a lot of the unnecessary drama or pain or suffering is created. Yeah. It's because yeah. you thought you, you, you think it was about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Correct. Limiting beliefs low self-esteem, right? Not feeling that you're worthy. Those are common. I mean, you could look to your left and to your right in the audience and, you know, two out of three of you are going to be dealing with those things, you know? So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to talk about it because, um, you know, people can go through their entire life and never break through you know, at all in those categories, they're more in the category of breaking down always, rather than breaking through. And let's talk about the process of people going in cycles, and repeating relationships, jobs, disappointments, and why they do that, and what occurs in their life. I'm sure you run into business people and entrepreneurs where they just have a cycle constantly that they go through. And they just keep repeating. It's like they're rewinding their life and keep living the same scenarios and toxicity in their lives. Uh, and th there's a reason for that. And I'm sure you could elaborate quite quite a bit on it. Um, do you deal with any any of your current clients with this situation? And how do you approach it? I just helped one uh, getting out of it, getting out of the psycho. Um, I could see that when he came to me for consults. Um, but then I told him about it after we, we had four sessions together. We're now moving on to the fifth one, but it was pretty much settled this issue. He was like, that was just spot on. That was my 20 plus years, past 20 plus years in one sentence of yours. That was my 20 plus years. It's really the cycle is again, coming back about then always chasing the next thing. It's about the chasing. If you, you are going for the same things over and over again, because you believe you have to get the thing, but to what end people don't think about it to what right. end they believe it's the thing, but to what end, if you keep tr get getting trapped in a cycle is because you are not leveling up to see what you're doing that for. We do things for an end. We make money for an end. Money is not the end. Money is a means to do things. Correct. Money is never the end, right? Right. So you make money to what end? To have a better life. To what end? What kind of a life is a better life? Happy? Fulfilled? Realize your potential? Peaceful? Mindful? Those are the higher level of things. So we can do a bazillion things. But eventually, all the things we do are pointing towards pretty much one or two or three of those higher level things of to what end. Correct. And that's where it comes in. People need to get cl clarity. And that's really kind of what a life coach can help you with is helping you really get clear on what it is you want. And a lot of people just don't know what they want. They don't they're not in tune with that. And because they don't they don't think, you know, I remember an exercise that uh, I've done with a few of my clients and I learned it from uh, a few uh, mentors uh, that I've had, you know, and it's, it's, it's the concept of sitting down with somebody, you got to have complete trust, kneecap to kneecap, and just asking each other, one person asking the other, what do you want? What do you really want? And just repeat that question over and over and over again with the purpose of trying to get to the depth of what it is they really want. And some people never really get to that point, but uh, there's even an exercise that I've taught before and that's coming up with your perfect day fantasy, right? 
What is your day like? Who do you eat breakfast with? Does somebody cook for you? Do you cook for yourself? Does a chef cook for you? Do you go out to eat? Do you eat at home? Who are you eating with? Right? What are you wearing? You know, getting very clear on everything. Where do you go to work? Do you go to an office? Does somebody pick you up? Do you drive to work? What kind of car do you drive in? Does somebody drive you to work? Does an Uber drive you? Do you work from home? What kind of office do you have? Right? And just getting really clear on what is your perfect day? What is it that you want? Right? Yeah. And that that is a picture that you can go through in your mind but what how i work with clients is slightly different than that i use images as well i use yes. visuals but because i'm an actor i was trained to have this body mind body connection so i help them tap into their feelings how does that feel how does your body feel and they really have to to be present and feel the feelings they would say oh uh, in those moments my temperature felt like I felt hot, temperature was high. My left finger, left index finger felt a little numb from all the typing or my knees felt stiff. So they can locate those feelings. And those are the tangible things. People get lost because of those thoughts. Thoughts are invisible and intangible, right? Correct. But feelings are tangible. You can feel them and they are real. They are the real feelings. When you're stressed out, maybe your throat gets tight. That's, that's how stress manifests for me. Some of my clients get really restlessness. The restlessness, like my, my legs can't stop shaking. They, other people have other symptoms. But I am more on the body, on the feeling side. So that I, don't, I care less about what you do or not do. I care more about how you feel. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. You know, I tell you what, that life is, is interesting. And, you know, we all need coaches. I don't care what kind of category you're in, in your life and you're in business, if you're an actor or if you're a business entrepreneur and you need someone to just help you get that clarity and so you could achieve more to break through and get what you really want. And that's, that's the biggest challenge most people face in, in, in their lifetime. And, you know, I think about uh, the, the concepts of, of our body. It's you're talking about physical, you know, our bodies in, are made up of predominantly water. And I know that uh, the culture environment and the economy, and there's a lot of other things can affect water quality, right? I'm sure you've seen that in your lifespan and it's interesting that certain things can do things to water and i still remember watching a study uh, about a few uh, buddhist monks talking about water and how thoughts can affect the water and interestingly enough if your thoughts can do that to water. What do you think your thoughts can do to your body and to your mm -hmm. mind? Right. So I, I love what you talk about that because you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, we are, we have five senses for a reason, right? And sometimes you got to look beyond your eyes and look and, and visualize. I think of, um, are you familiar with the story of uh, Walt Disney as, as he was, lying in his deathbed a reporter came to him and said walt disney i'm sorry you're not going to be able to see the epcot center i'm really sorry and he stood up in his bed deathbed and said are you crazy why do you think it's coming to fruition why do you think it's being built it's because i saw it exactly right that's yeah that's the thing about coaching is that the whole point of coaching is about believing it before you see it yep and it applies to anything and everything you know believe you got to believe first before you see the results that's how you bridge the gap yep. it's about building that belief knowing that it's possible being possible doesn't necessarily mean it's 100 percent sure because nobody can give you that guarantee but it's very very possible it's possible so we go for the possibility that's right. Yeah. And part of that belief is taking action, right? I mean, that's what, that's why you hire a coach. 
not just not just thinking about it, but taking action. That's part of the believing too, right? Taking your first step. What's next? But you have to believe before you can take action. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, and and I, and I also remember, you know, hey, sometimes you had to deal with fear. Let's talk about fear for a moment. Sure. Um, you know, some. I still remember a, a story of me. I was actually on a on a rock in Colorado Rockies. It was on a mountain. It wasn't just a rock. This was a, mo- a mountain. And I was doing what's called the Australian Repel. Are you familiar with the Australian Repel? No. Okay. Well, what is it? Tell me about it. The Australian Repel is when you stand on a mountain and it's about maybe a couple hundred feet below you is the ground. Mm-hmm. And there's an entire mountain cliff going straight down. The Australian Repel is like the Cedar Repel. You've seen people going off the back of a mountain and bouncing right well the australian repel is going head down first okay and you're walking on the mountain they used it in wartime to attack an enemy because you could have one hand free and basically you lock yourself here as you move your feet you lift it to let the rope go through so you could walk down or run down fast so as you put this on you break and you stop Mm -hmm. as soon as you let it go you got to start moving your feet but to learn to trust yourself because there's trust me this fear you got to trust the rope you got to trust your instructors you got to trust the people below you that are holding you in case you fall the rope yeah but your body doesn't want to do it (laughs) it just doesn't want to do it you know i don't know if you can imagine that but sometimes that's what it's like for people when it comes to breakthrough of fear wouldn't you agree Yep. Yeah. So talk about fear for a little bit and how you help your clients overcome that. So first you got to realize that fear is an illusion. Well, there are actually, there are physical dangers, right? If, if your house is on fire, well, that's a, that's an actual danger. That's a different thing. Correct. If there is a life-threatening danger, that's a different thing. But most of the things but most of the things that we're scared of are not those things. They, we see them as threats. Then again, it goes back to sometimes it's really like self-esteem. It goes back to as a threat of your self-esteem. It makes you feel less of yourself. So that is like that just because our brains are hardwired to steer us away from danger, fight or flight. If you see failure, fear of failure, for example, a lot of people can't take action because they are afraid of failure. But why would you see things as failure, right? Why would you see them as a failure? That, that's also my, that's like my first question. How do you define failure? Oh, if I get, if I cannot get into college or if I cannot book the show, they think failure as not getting the external thing, not getting that thing. They right. think success as getting that thing. That's right. Well, ma- many of the greatest athletes in the world, they've struck out many times, missed many auditions, got kicked out of a, you know, off stage, booed on stage, you know, but it's the, their tenacity to go back Right. I think it was John Maxwell that wrote the book, Failing Forward. I think it's just about a a big part of it. The hurt for people, if you think of it as a failure and you're scared of it, it's because it makes it hurts. So how much would you let it hurt? That is a thing. Yes, absolutely. Nobody likes, I would say some failures can be really hard. Those failures, if you put them in, you know, if you want it a lot and you don't get it, it can be hard. I've had many of those moments. Again, it's a shift of perspective. If you look at it as failure that harms your self-esteem, harms your self-worth, makes you less of yourself, of course it hurts. If you see that piece, that failure as a piece of information, it's a feedback to help you get better next time. There you go. That's what it's all about, right? Helping you become better. So, well, Tim, why don't we ask, uh, we, we learned a lot about you, but I got one last question for yeah. you. Okay. Um, 
you know, if you're looking for help in your life, no matter where you're at and you need someone to coach you through that process, then this young lady is the person to help you, no doubt. But we want to know something specific. We want to know if we never had the chance to talk to you again, we never got a chance to hear another word come out of your mouth. What one thing would you want us to know about you? I am a wise puppy. That's how my friends describe me. I think it, this image really st strikes me. So I'm just going to tell everybody, you know, how to remember, quote unquote, remember me is that I'm a wise puppy, that I am, I have a lot of energy. I'm just natural, warm, energetic person, but I'm wise. I'm wise beyond my age. Um, so it's a weird combination. And that's how I have my own coaching style is that I am energetic, but I'm also neutral. So that's where the wise and the puppy thing come together. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, I wrote a song once and, and it's called soar like an eagle, roar like a lion and play like a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So well, that's great. So that reminds me of, well, I'll remember you as that. And I'm sure everybody else will. It was sure great having you on the call today and Thank you so much, talking Ed. to you and Thanks interviewing for having you. Me. No problem. And uh, how would uh, somebody connect with you? They just go to your website. We'll put it here down below her, her video so you can visit her. They could book a, a session with you if they wanted to talk with you, a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you could, you know, hey, take a test drive, you know, get to know your coach. And that's what it's all about. You got to find your right style. And uh, you got a good glimpse of uh, a life coach and the concepts you go through on this show. My name is Ed Garza, Mr. Pitchman. If we can be of any help to you, please let us know. Make it a great day. Thank you. Thank you.